Hello and welcome to Jamaica TV, where we give you all the latest news. Now for the details. The police sergeant who was fatally wounded in Gregory Park, Portmore, St. Catherine, in the early hours of Sunday morning has been identified. He is 57-year-old Sergeant Avril McCollin of St. Andrew's South Police Division and is believed to have been stationed at the Uns Bay Police Station. Sergeant McCollin was reportedly playing dominoes with friends at the premises in Gregory Park shortly after 1 a.m. when some six gunmen entered the home. Fires were opened on the lawman who ended up passing away with his pistol clutch in his hand. It is unclear if he was able to return the fire before he was cut down. A probe is now underway into the passing with the major investigation division leading the way. Olivia Grange, Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports, says that the government intends to restore the boyhood home of reggae pioneer Bunny Whaler, which was damaged by fire Saturday. The house, located on 2nd Street in Trenchtown, St. Andrew, has been declared a protected site by the Jamaica Heritage Trust in 2018. Bunny Whaler lived at the property with his father, sister and stepmother, Sidala Booker, Bob Marley's mother. It was in Trenchtown where Bob Marley and Bunny Whaler met Peter Tosh and became the Whaling Whalers. Grange said that the two-story house represents a space in which the creative genius of three Jamaican artists put the music, their sorrows, struggles, determination, and messages of love, underpinned by Rastafarian philosophy and reggae beat. She added that the Jamaica National Heritage Trust will soon commence an assessment of the damage to the structure towards restoration. Andrea Gordon, the imprisoned former operation manager at National Commercial Bank, is to return to the Supreme Court next year for the next airing of her case. Gordon was sentenced to a total of seven years and six months in prison in May of this year after pleading guilty to the previous months to stealing tens of millions of dollars from the bank over a three-year period. The Financial Investigation Division then signaled its intent to recoup on the proceeds crime act any wealth gained by Gordon relative to the millions she stole. It was reported that between January 2007 and May 2020, Gordon transferred over $34 million from the bank to her personal accounts. An investigation was launched by members of the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch, which led to Gordon's arrest and charge. She pleaded guilty to the offences in April of this year. Gordon, who was 52 years old at the time, was sentenced in the Ohm Circuit Court on May 31st to five years and four months on three counts of larceny as a servant and two years and 11 months on three counts of access with intent to commit an offence. Additionally, Gordon was sentenced to serve seven years and six months, even on a seven counts of engaging in a transaction involving criminal property. Justice Lorna Shelley Williams ordered that the sentence run concurrently, meaning that a convict will spend just under eight years in prison. Are black people suspicious of taking the COVID-19 vaccine? There is a low vaccination rate among black people. Black Americans make up 13% of the U.S. population. However, they account for up to 23% of COVID-19 deaths. Looking at the age group, for comparison, the death rate for black Americans aged 35 to 44 is over eight times that of white in this same group. The COVID-19 vaccination rate in black people in the United States is less than 15 percent. Across the United States, 72 percent of the adult population have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. While this progress represents a significant achievement in vaccinations that have led to steep declines in COVID-19 cases and deaths, vaccination coverage and its protection remain uneven across the country. In the health care, there has been several racial disparities across the board which decrease access to health care. People of lower income have a higher rate of chronic illnesses, which are higher income access to better medical care becomes easier, especially given the surge in patient financial responsibility since in recent years. Globally, 25% of people are fully vaccinated, with over 5 billion doses administered. In low-income countries, only 1.4% of people 
have received at least one dose.